this is great. stuff I've never told anyone. Yeah. Raha and Murray is my toughest fight to date. Like you just see Mayweather, you know. I hit him dead. I've had my run, 12, 13 yeah. years. I've done all I could in this time, and now let's move on to other things. See Involved. the stream of blood running down the road like a, yes, and I was like, nauseous. Listen, man, no one cares. This is the moment I've been waiting for, <laughs> to have my champion, Kevin Arena, welcome to we we'll give show. you a drum roll. Yeah, well, let's go, Because <laughs> I was waiting, I was going to bed at night thinking to myself, when's Pete going to have me on his show? What, be, have I, what have I done wrong? <laughs> I, I, I've been waiting for this time, Kev. Because uh, you know what? This is not just an ordinary show, show for me. This is actually the pinnacle of, of my show, you know. And, um, you know, with everything being going on, with, uh, you know, the, the, the coronavirus is going on, the travel, our own journey together with our boxing has been like a roller coaster. And uh, as you know, and I know, we've been like, you know, we had one fight um, in the COVID condition and it was kind of a terrible scenario, no crowd, no spectators. Uh, tell us about your experiences going through with this whole process because let the people know. Yeah. Well, Pete, you know. firstly, thank you very much. Like you said, uh, it's been a roller coaster of a ride, but it's been a flipping amazing journey and it's still a journey because we're still on the road together. So thank you. Um, COVID, crazy times. Like, it's actually yeah. hard to explain. Obviously, the whole world's experiencing it. But as a fighter, fighting in the pandemic, fortunate enough to have had a fight, grateful. But it was crazy. Completely different feeling, yeah. having no crowd there. A different setup being in that bio bubble. But we make the most of it. And what we always say, and we've said it from since we've been a successful team together, was we need to make the most of the situation we dealt with. Yep. And that's what we did. And... Uh, we won. And obviously, listen, regardless of who we beat, what we did, it was a warm up fight. But the situation was something to get used to because now we're going into a fight, possibly. Well, we are going into a fight yeah. and it could be the same conditions. So, Kev, let them know and let me know how you're feeling about moving forward now as we're approaching our fights in July. Uh, what's been going on in your life and how you're feeling about things? For sure, Pete. No, and then just going back to your comment quickly, you spoke about uh, no warm. There's no such thing as a warm-up fight, and you're 100 correct because you've always said that to me. Because that on that given day, that guy you think's in a warm-up fight is coming to take everything you have to lose. So you're 100 yeah. right on that. It wasn't a warm-up fight. It was a fight I had to win in order to yeah. get to this opportunity. Sorry, so I must correct myself no, for that because no, you're right, 100 well percent right. Yeah. Um, Pete, what's where am I at right now? It's hard to actually say where I'm at because. Sometimes I have to sit and process what I've achieved mm. with you as my trainer. If you think about it from where we've come from, and we don't need to go back into where we've come from in terms of yeah. no amateur background, because people pretty much know that. But we are fighting for a WBA world title now. That's we're massive. traveling the globe together for the fourth time. Yep. And we're going, to, we're going, we're living our dream. Well, we're living our dream in a sense of our future. We, we, we're achieving what many thought we could never achieve. We've done that already. And now we're going out there not to prove others wrong, but to do it for ourselves. And, and honestly, I, I mean, I'm a, a remarkable place in my career in a sense of I'm absorbing everything, but I'm also appreciating every moment, appreciating yeah. our moments of success, yeah. appreciating the, the struggles. And when I say struggle, yes, we haven't lost for what, since 2014, how many Incredible. years is that? Seven years. We haven't lost si since we've been, we've never lost since mm. I've been with you, you as my trainer, firstly. Yeah. We've never lost yeah. together. That's and uh, um, it's a journey, Peter, and you know it. And I just said, and sometimes I look at you and you know, and I say to you, Peter, it's crazy. This is our time. And mm. I don't just say that I'm not a hop job and I don't hop, need to help myself. I believe in myself. I'm an athlete. I come from a sporting background. But it's just, it's surreal because we never bullshit. Mm. We don't tell a lie on our social media. We're mm. not delusional. We don't lie to the people of the public. And, and, We're and, living our dream in the truest, honest way, yeah. in the fistic art of boxing and we are gladiators doing our job. You've walked the road, I'm walking that road now, mm. but we're doing it together in a partnership and it's honestly remarkable. So you can yeah. ask me where am I at right now? I can be out for three hours and still the whole show and bore people and tell them what, what my emotions feel. Mm. But they can just, just believe me, I'm in the most amazing place. And yes, we've had hardships, ups and downs. Even there's, there's, there's downs even when you're winning because you're dealing with critics and you're dealing yeah. with uh, uh, what's next and you're dealing with yourself emotional self and you then, know your emotions are the biggest thing the other side of, of it all um, to add into the picture of what Kevin's saying is uh, you know where you are right now like just to add on 
to this hype of what's going on and yeah. people realizing this hype. Um, you know, Kevin is, and this is where I take my head off team, because there's two things as a trainer I look for. And one is heart and dedication. And it's very difficult to find that in, in, in an athlete or a fighter. There's a lot of great fighters, a lot of potentially good fighters. But the problem is also is th when, when if I say to Kevin, Kev, do this, do this, do that, you're adaptable, you're teachable, and you, your commitment and trust is like ma magnetized. It's like north, north and south, just connecting. And that's what's so like incredible when I've trained all these fighters in the past is that, you know, it's just that connection. It's that magnet magnetic connection. And I'm going to add on to this, which is incredible because yeah, in South Africa is a young Kevin Arena growing through boxing. You started at what age, Kev? Professionally or in Professionally. I turned pro at 18, turning 19, Pete. It's crazy. 18, turning 19. And now you've had one fight which you lost, which you turned around because of obviously it was a biggest scale in South African market and it was overwhelming. It was a, 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 a it was a good fight. Yeah. But it was a fight that I believe that, you know, that you recorrect and showed what you should have done. Sure. And it's and, a, and sorry, Pete, and sorry, you're hundred percent right. And it's a fight that was exciting. Mm, it was a barn burner, toe-to-toe -to -toe war. And I came out second best on that evening. Yeah. And Johnny Miller beat me in 2014 on points. And kudos to him. Well done. He's, got he's a great victory. fighter. He's yeah, a warrior. Sure. He's a very tough fighter. He's a warrior. And, but I didn't take that loss as I never, I never moped on about it. Mm. I never, ever felt depressed about my loss, Peter. I, and I said, maybe I have something wrong with me, Mark. Maybe I don't respect the sport because I'm not. But I just I turned but you me around. you just had to come back and set the record Just straight. do that because the circle turns. Yeah. Don't reinvent the wheel. Know right. what you have to do to fix it. Right. And we haven't lost since then. And, and, the, and then thank no God. one can take that. Thank God. And God is great. But yeah. at the end of the day, we fighters. And, and if I don't listen to you and I do my own thing in a fight or I can't absorb what you're teaching me, you will lose. Yeah. It's just, well, you that, know. That's what I find, you know, and, and looking back at, at certain fighters, and one of my favorite guys is Tyson Fury right now. Um, when Tyson Fury, you know, you saw how his career was going. And he's such a talented fighter. When you hear all other heavyweights speak about him, how he is and how feared he, was, how he is in the game. Um, as far as, I remember Mark Tyson talking about him. Obviously, they saw things we didn't see. And um, I kept wondering in the back of my mind, what are they seeing about this guy? Because he kept toying around, but he was so like brutally gifted in a way that he could get away with a lot of things, you know. And also genetically, you know, being that big... But it doesn't mean a big man's always a great fighter because it can work against him. You know, you got a lot of mass to move and everything. So when I watched him and I saw this thing about him, I said, one thing about Tyson Fury, if he stops fooling around, takes every opponent seriously, like it's his, it's his like do or die fight. Like he did when he corrected himself, you know, in, in his fight with um, uh, uh David Wilder, Wilder, Wilder yeah. I'm just jumping in names here. Yeah. When he was fighting Wilder and you saw the change because he took on a trainer that was actually serious about what, he's, what he had to do. And he turned his whole life around. It wasn't that the other trainer did any worse, but I just think the, he needed that magnetic connection. He needed that change. He needed that respect to understand what he really has inside of him. Sure. And that's what I see in you. And, and, that, and that's incredible. But just moving forward and watching what's going, you know, I always say this, you know, Ronnie Berman has been a great, the greatest promoter this country has produced. And it's, it's factual. He knows how to do the game and he's, we've worked well together with him. And, um, you know, you've become such a global impact. And I'm going to move on by saying this because the calls we have received recently and, you know, people watching us out there, it shows the effect of how great, how great things you're doing. Sure. And I'm just going forward by telling you that this is your moment, this is your time. And I'm really looking forward to this fight. We've been training very hard. And I just want you to tell the viewers and, you know, tell them how difficult it is not right now with your training and how the things you're going through. Sure. Because Ryan Murray, he's, he's a good fighter. He's going to be, he's a WBA champion and sure. nobody's WBA champion is a joke. No. So everyone knows 
Ken Marine is finding a very, very good fighter. For sure, Pete. And you know, back to saying testaments of what you said, and you can take a pre I can take appreciation out of it, and it compliments you. Is so Rodney Berman has done so much for us, and we've had mm. to keep winning. So it's a partnership, it's a relationship, but keep winning. And there has people on the international stage are recognizing us and reaching out to us, but. It's just a compliment to what you've done for me and what I've done on the stage. It oh, makes me, you. Act, you know, when you do ever doubt yourself, never, because, you know, mm. as a human being, you always sometimes ask yourself, am I doing enough? Mm. And that's when I realized I'm doing enough. Like, you know, a lot of people live a lie on social media, Peter, and we talk about it every day. True, and true. they bullshit the public. True. And we've never needed to do that because mm. we stay true. And I will continue to stay true. Rahad Murray is my toughest fight to date. Mm. He's 30 fights, 29 wins. 24 wins by knockout. You know, Pete, that's a Great. remarkable record. Look, he he's definitely in it to keep his record clean. For sure. He well, when I say he's only lost once, you've only lost once, but he knows, he he feels and, he's the next best. And, and I can promise you, he's training hard because he knows okay. that the beast is coming for him. Yeah. The cruiserweights know that, Peter. And, and I truly believe it. I believe I'm a very avoided oak in the cruiserweight division or avoid a fighter. And, and not, I'm not blowing mm. my own trump, but I feel because I'm a horrible fighter for fan. them. Not not because of power, not because of, I think I'm a difficult person to fight in a sense of, yeah. they don't really know what they're getting from me. And there's not much footage on me that gives away what they get in the yeah. ring. I, I believe that. Remember, we are coming in different every fight. Sure. So Improving, which no, is what yeah, you said to no, me, we need to improve. What I always believe, and I always say, I, I, I try my best to make sure that you don't go in the same as the last opponent because it is it is totally different fight and that's something peter that stuck with me and i, I, I can't tell you when mm. you told me you could have maybe told me 2011 when i turned pro to you or you could have told me 2014 but i'll never forget it you said to me kev you got here for this fight now you're fighting another fight you want to get there with your skill set the next fight you want to get there if you remain here and you work hard, you're going to keep going back to that same point. It's something you always said to me, I never forgot that. Mm. Kev, you got to make sure you're doing that. Right. And that's up to me in terms of listening to you. One, yeah. s skills is everything. Skills pay the bills. And yeah. then that's the bottom line. You can True. you can run a marathon daily. If you can't, if you're not skillful in there at the top level, you'll get your asked. Yeah. Skills pay bills. And something and, you've always said to me. And, 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 and adding on to what Kevin's saying is like, you know, everybody trains hard. If you look at the top 10 guys in the world, and you put them on a fitness-based contest, yeah, which is quite interesting. Take fighters in a group. Yeah, that's, enough, and, that's and, something and actually, that you're gonna do. Actually, gonna I do might want to do that on my <laughs> show. Is actually, actually take top five fighters in a group and put them through a training regime only. No sparring, no nothing, just fitness and conditioning. I think what it'll be like one of those Ironman contests. It'll be, I think yeah. it'll be very competitive on that level. And I think it'll be so surprising that there's so many good fighters or good athletes out there. Totally. But Pete, you know, and everything complements itself. Like boxing skills pay the bills. Like yep. you can you can be the fittest, the strongest, and we know very fit fighters. Yep. We know very strong fighters, but they don't go on to be world champions. No. They don't have the skill or the mindset or whatever. So yeah. everything needs to come together. It all needs to amalgamate together. Your boxing skill must come together. Your conditioning coach must work on you. Your mindset coach must work on you. Your yeah. diet must be good. And that's where you're achieving the 1% to be a little bit better than the rest person. So but true. don't be fooled because that oak's doing exactly the same yep. thing. Am I right? Right. And that's the kind of mindset I've had, Pete. So you said, where am I at right now? To tell the viewers and to tell you, it's like, it's pressure. Mm. But diamonds are made and cut from pressure. And I truly believe the harder my opponents and every pressure fight I've had. Let's just think about pressure fights, Pete. It was Mickey Nielsen. I, I, I just want to stop you. Okay. Why well, I want to stop Kevin here? Because this was my my conversation with <laughs> everything. And I, and I knew, I said, don't go there. Because <laughs> why I want to say this? Because this is one experience I don't think viewers know. He has a man, comes with no, no amateur boxing experience. Okay. He fights a guy who got offered a fight against a man called Yuri Kalenga. And big respect to Yuri. I saw him. We were offered the fight. We watched him fight Dorodola. He won fight of the year. That fight won fight of the year. Dorodola won fight of the year. With uh, Dorticus. Uh, sorry. Bigger name. Dorticus. Dorticus. Dorticus, uh, yeah. yeah. And we got confronted with that fight. And I just want to jump in on that because I'm going to say, and this is where I found Kevin... I looked and I shook my head and I said, Kev, I knew you were going to look at him. We've been offered a fight and 
it's a big level fight from where we've come. I mean, yes. we were on the local scene breaking through. <laughs> the fight, the local scene, the fight before that one, we fought a guy, a guy, respect to all opponents. Yeah. But we fought a guy from, I don't know where he is from, Mexico. He was short, round and stocky and I went the distance with him. And that, that was scary. Yeah, because Peter was like, Kev, you got to blow these guys out the water. I was like, yeah, I get you, Peter. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And then you, then, then I think you've forgotten. We actually were in line to fight the world title, IBO, but we yeah. went to fight Maxim Vlasov. Yeah. That fell through. Then they offered Dorodola. We were on f for Dorodola. That never happened. Yep. And then there was Yuri Kalinga. Yep. And I knew who was, I knew who Yuri Kalinga was. Yep. We, the, the last time we saw him blow out Belanti, a left hook, it was on one of Golden Glove shows in Monaco, hit him dead. Crazy. Barring the fact that he fought a, Doricus in the fight of the year nomination fight for the WBA world title. And before that, Mickey Nelson. Exactly. A dead, deadly puncher. Oh. I remember him finding Johnny Miller. No, I, he, I couldn't believe it. I had to sit ringside and watch that. But you know what? Somebody said to me, I'll never forget. I think, I can't remember who the person was. He's like, okay, and hit. I said, don't worry. So can I. Yep. I'll never and, forget and, that. And, and that's what I got to commend you because when I approached Kevin, I said, Kev, we've got a big fight on our hands, but do you trust me? Remember? Of course. And I looked at you and I said, Kev, do you believe me? Do you believe I know that you'll beat this guy? And I knew you went back yes. to look at this guy. And I went, because I checked him out, because Ronnie said, I looked at him and I watched his form and I watched his skill. I always watch a man's skill level. I watch what he does. And I looked at it and I said, Kev, we will beat this guy. If you just stick to plan and we go through it, you'll beat this guy. And I remember resting for that fight, got closer and closer to the fight. And I saw your demeanor change. The competitiveness change. But I saw a kind of like, not a worry, but like you knew in your heart, this is big. 100%. You knew I'll, big. I, I'll never deny that. And I said, if Kevin crosses this bridge, that's a major climb. That, that's a confidence booster beyond. That's going to be the, that's going to be breaking every block that we climb. 100%. And that's where I, I'd, that you can carry on because yeah well pete like that you you summed everything up that nervous feeling so when i talk about the pressure mm -hmm. let's in my mindset so i'm going to go from my 2015 fight can i tell you where the pressure starts not pressure where i started thriving on it kevin arena versus dion kutsia he was the sa yep. champion okay that was a great nick one. durant had his camp nick durant so uh, may his dear soul rest in peace a great, great boxing trainer, trainer. Great a legend trainer. in saving and boxing he 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 manned uh, Dion Kutsia. He was in Dion Kutsia's corner, and me and you. Dion Kutsia was the champion, and it was a pressure fight in a sense of a lot of people came to watch that fight because it was Kevin Arena, is he a hop job? Yep. Is he a hop job? And it's Dion Kutsia, the SA champion, tough as nails, big D. Okay. Yeah. That was a. And fight he was a great out. competitor. For sure. Great competitor. We rolled him. I hit him with every angle possible, I, and and me and Dion are friends to this day. But he knows. He was in the fight of his life. He hasn't fought since then. But that was a, that okay. was actually a break for either one of you. And, and, and you proved yeah. I'm the I'm, I'm, I'm going to go the forward from this. And then yeah. Nick Duran messaged me and he says, well done, my boy. You got my respect. And and that meant a lot for me because Nick Duran's a legend trainer. I didn't more? take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. I said, thank you very much, Uncle Nick. I appreciate it. It's just sport competitive. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll never forget that. I think yeah. I still have that message on my phone. as like our mm. message. Mm. And he messaged me. And... Uh, that's pressure fight number one for me. And then we had a few keep busy fights. We fought Johnny Miller. Then we fought uh, Mickey Nielsen, the Super 4 final. I think breakthrough of Johnny Miller was also a big one. Yeah, a big one. That was a pressure the, fight because it was a rematch. A, a, mental, rematch. a mental rematch because I lost the first one on points and I had to beat yeah. Johnny the second time in order to progress to the Super 4 final against Mickey Nielsen. Big change. Mickey yeah. Nielsen, a big puncher. Massive. Top 10 rated in all the organizations. Mm -hmm. Number two in the number four in the RBF. He was rated in the WBC. A big punch. His record sure. at the time was 22 and 0 with 19 wins by knockout. Yeah. We boxed him smart because I stuck to your game plan and we beat him. We moved on. We had two more keep busy fights. Uh, like random and guys. Vicky Peter Mororo. I believe, I believe you could have stuck a few of them out. I should have been, but I was still but developing. I think you're still in your mind. And, 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 and almost had a little bit of, not, not, uh, lack of trust in myself but a little bit of um, you're just reserving yourself to say in no, case in case can i do this yeah. can i open up a can because i know what i can do mm. and that then i knew but it's like can i then i'm yuri kalinga so this is where you ended the last little bit of conversation pete you're 100 right and you i was so nervous in a sense of this is the opportunity yep. for me can i do it am i good enough he's strong he's a big puncher yeah big time so I'll never forget but the I morning knew, of the fight. I woke Kev, up. 
I knew the turnaround of that fight. After that fight, I said, this guy, this boy, is, this, this, is a, this is a champion. Yeah. I'll never forget, Pete, the morning of the fight, my ex-wife, Gina, so she, she was sitting next to me, I sat like this at the edge of the bed. I said, I'll never forget this. You know what's the worst that can happen? He knocks me out. But I can promise you now, I'm going to give him my all. That's how nervous yeah. I was, because I believed that yeah. this can go either way. Yeah. I said, I'll do this for my, my kids, my newborn, yeah. and Brooklyn. Beautiful. And he's not going to take it from me. I'll never forget that. And no one, you're the first person I've told that. Yeah. And that's what I said. And I went into that fight very nervous. Yeah. And when round one went, when that ball went, and I started throwing my jab, and he started throwing, I said, I sat down in the corner, and you remember this, I said, Pete, he's nothing. Yeah. I realized, I got that. After that first set of ones, I said, you know what? He's just a human like yep. me. And, and I'm going to beat him tonight. Right. So that was a pressure defined point. Okay, Pete. And then let's just think about the fights. I don't want to bore the the, the viewers and stuff. I just no, want to because it's, it's stuff I've never told anybody. Yeah, I've never yeah. told any television show. I've never told any. It's the first time I'm having opportunity to express myself. So it's great. Yeah. Then we go on to Dimitri Kutcher. Dimitri Kutcher, a good fighter, great amateur fight, pedigree. Yeah. He went the distance with the Lunga yeah. Makabu. Lunga Makabu is a beast. He's a very good fighter. It's great, you know, it's yeah. respect to Lunga Makabu. We we all beasts in the division yeah. in the top ten, and he's he deserves respect. Dimitri Kutcher gave him a great fight. A lot of people, I, I'd say 70% of people say, I got no chance. Oh, I had him hurt. Yeah. I had Kalinga hurt. I had Kutcher hurt. I could yeah. have stopped him. But I went the safe route. I wanted to win. Yeah. Okay. Then I went to uh, Azerbaijan or whatever. First time fighting away from home. So another hurdle to overcome. It's pressure in the sense of it's hard to do things. But just remain true to myself. I said, just remain calm. Listen to the instructions. Whether the storm, because he came with a storm. Exactly what you said. He said, Kevin, this is going to come out hard. You need to jump on him. And he jumped on me because yeah. I never, yeah. I never jumped on him. That was the first and thing I weathered the storm. I'll never forget everything I you said, said to me. Got to jump on this guy first. I exactly. you like. I tried to like feed him out to let me box him. I, said, I, said, I didn't no. want to box me. He was there to hurt me. Yeah. I weathered the storm. I dropped him in the fifth round. And he bombs. Eh? Yeah, very strong guy. Very, very strong. strong guy. I don't know if he, he was a very strong guy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I dropped him in the fifth round and went the distance. You know, once again dropped a guy, hurt a guy, but said, you know what? Can I go? Can I do this? Injured my shoulder prior, prior to that. I mean, I was nursing my shoulder for, for a mm -hmm. long time. Had the operation. Then I come back fight with Arthur Man. That was a turning point in my career in a sense of, I said to myself, I need to step up now. I can't just win safe. I need to become exciting. Mm -hmm. I need to... Okay, long story short, rehab, did my professional stuff, blew Arthur out, the mm -hmm. water, knocked him out. And then the busy fights. And then now we have at this point in our career we are a diamond still under pressure looking to make Which it and, a, and i've always just stayed yeah. true to that pete and it's a beautiful uh, journey exactly you know? people don't realize it they don't so realize it for a man with no amateur pedigree mm. peter it's a lot of pressure wow it's it incredible. is a lot of pressure and and, and i've seen fathers succumb to the pressure but, I, but I, one thing i see about you you know some people are so talented but when their stage is lit that inner being just is like too big for them yeah but then you get guys like you that live for that their stage you know and you got you got big fighters out there like you know canelo what a great performer amazing i mean that guy i don't i don't really see anybody beating him no and even fact. a guy like anthony joshua he's yeah they can say that yeah. the guy can be wilder can be fury can beat him he's got bmt he so fought Klitsch, go. Yeah. he sat on the cameras he got back yeah. up and won that's big match temperament. And how, how, how he came back as Ruiz. Yes. To win. Know, to win. And uh, how he did it was he, he, he's a true athlete. And one thing about him, I love about him, he's a true gentleman and great yeah. asset for the sport he's of boxing. He's a great ambassador. You know, we've got so many, like, you know, boxing is the greatest combat sport in sure. my eyes because, and I love MMA. I yeah. love all fight sports, but when it comes to gladiatorial, when you're equally matched and, you know, you got this, you know, it's like one pun one fighter's got this acid, one fighter's got that acid, but it's like, you watch this like a chess game, it like just molds and there's that one exciting moment or, you know, things that happen in the fight that just turns around, like you just see Mayweather, you know, he, he's the greatest of all time. Well, personally, not in my books, sure. but I love him. For what he's done for the game and i love him for it i'm not i don't i don't like what he's doing now about uh, uh logan, paul, logan yeah. paul but you know what in all fairness it's great for the sport because yeah. it's brought so many people that don't even think or care about boxing 
into boxing. Sure. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of people have been the first time to his fights yeah. when he fought that big fighter against, um, what's it, T, T, what was KSR. it? KSR. Uh, KSR. Uh, who was that, Jake Paul? One of them, Logan Paul. Let's I watched the fight and it was a great fight. Yeah. It was a great performance, no embarrassment. But yeah. um, the, the, the beauty of um, this event was coming forward now for you. Um, on a stage, we, we're going to Brussels and it's going to be quite a, it's going to be quite a, um, a great journey. I'm putting it as a great journey. I'm positive about it. We, the only thing is we're going to be four weeks locked down in two different parts of the world. So we're going to leave South Africa. We're going to be 15 days out in another country before we enter Brussels two weeks prior to the fight. So. We got a lot on our hands. We got a great journey, and oh, the uh, odds are against yeah, us. We 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 nine weeks in, and I just can't wait for this moment. Um, for sure. I just know you're gonna do what you need to do, I and that's what. And you know, Peter, I have to win. It's not just for for life. It's not for me. It's just because I've worked hard to get you, and and I know Ryan yeah. Mary's working hard. I'm not a fool. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but the true reality of it is, we been the odds are against us. Uh, in a way, and in some ways not. I, I'm using them for us. Mm. We're going to have spend time together wherever we end up in our private home on another in another country. Strictly thinking about training, nothing else really worrying us mm. besides my kids at home. But training, like I would train here, out of my comfort zone, it's going to make me more hungry. Uh, I, their focus is just exactly. going to another level. And another thing, it's um, this is life. You know, yeah. this is. A real champion needs to win anyway. If you go to Germany, you go to Belgium, oh, you go to America, you win. And if yeah. you do get robbed, the boxing public know. Then you didn't lose. Yeah. On your record, you lost, but you didn't lose. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that. Yeah. And I'm going there to enjoy myself. Look at you in the eyes. Like I say to you before you walk to the ring every time, this ain't my first rodeo. Let's can go. Oh, let's go, brother. Let's do I it. I don't know if I can say it, but let's yeah, go. Yeah, you can say what you want. And that's what this, I say to you because, you know, what I, that's truly my, I'm yeah. passionate about what I do. Mm. And I, I don't seek, uh, the word I'm looking for, I don't seek, not entitlement, I don't seek, um, when somebody goes, you need credit. I don't mm. seek credit or, or from anybody else. I honestly don't, Pete. I know listen, what I've achieved. You've you know what I've credit, achieved. You know, it's just like it's, people take notice of exactly. It's, of great it's, it's work, just you know? about for me just enjoying myself mm. and seeing what I can do, maximizing the time you have as a professional. And this is part of the journey. Beautiful. And uh, you know, and who knows where I'm going to go? So maybe three or four more years as a professional because I want to retire a healthy professional. I want to retire saying I've had my run 12, 13 yeah. years. I've done all I could in this time, and now let's move on to other things. You know, Kev. Right now, you're not only shining your flag, you're shining the flag for this country. And South Africa needs it because, you know, we're such a, um, you know, we're such a country. I think this country is just confused. We actually do appreciate and love one another, but there's some people that are just pulling away what, what really stands there. And I really believe, you know, you're the man to do it. Yeah. You, you, you got that value of really making us proud. You know, it's like the World Cup rugby, you know, how people change and you just see how people got together for the victory. And that's what I'm looking forward for you, you know, because I know you're a people's person and, you know, growing through in a competitive world that we're in, and especially in South Africa, you know, to break through all the people in our own country, you know, we're going to have negatives with our own people because there are people rooting for your opponent that you find in South Africa. Sure. But now you're going global and... um your your globalness now has made South Africa go, hey, we got a boy, we we got a, we got a champion, we got a we got a we got a, a future legend for this country. You know, Brian Mitchell was our previous. I remember Pierre Kutsa, yeah, we, Corey we've, Sanders. We've we've had a lot of good fighters, mm. Peter, and and I respect the fighters from yesteryear because they've paved the way for us fighters. Great. You have paved the way for us fighters. Brian Mitchells, Dingan Tobela, yeah. Silence Mabuza, the rose the roses were better. Dingan, you mm. got uh, welcome Nita. We are the bunga. The yeah, list goes yeah. on. But if we look in today's times, we've got great fighters that can... As, I don't need to fly the flag on my own. You've got guys like Tabisa and Chuni who's doing a hell of oh, a good, good job. Good. Tabisa oh. is a great fighter. you got guys like uh, Tulani and Bengi. I believe he's, he deserves I believe, to be right I believe, up there. I see something bigger than that guy. I don't know I what probably, it is. I think he just it just needs, needs to be a turning point it's, in it's his gonna career. It's going to happen. You have guys like Heki Butler. Who's, 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 who's run the road, uh, the ring magazine champion. Unbelievable. Uh, WBA. Yep. 
Hickey is done phenomenal. He's obviously on the comeback trail now because yeah. he's reigniting his career. But we have South Africans that have flown the flag, currently flying the flag with me. And I feel that we can all do it together. Totally. And the, the nation needs to get behind all of us. Yeah. I said, I said, uh, there's a lot of things I don't understand, but in life, I, I begin to understand a little bit more every day, as I, every year as I get wiser, is not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to feel that they need to support you. But when we fight against another country, be patriotic. Yeah, like 100%. the Americans, like the... The British. Uh, the Brits. When they and, do football in their men, yeah. and, and people, World you Cup, know, they go crazy. Everybody's man. entitled to their own opinions. Yeah who they want to support, who they, but when people get malicious, that's out of pure hate. And now there are people that are going to do that in life, in general, in sport, well, we're going to, so we're going to, we're going to yeah. feel that. But I just say real record will recognize real. Yeah. And us guys in South African boxing right now, there's, uh, there's a lot of guys, but if I say tools, Tabiso, myself, Heki, there's a lot of good fighters. Um, one of my favorite fighters, Olani Tete, Maruti yeah, Talani. The real fighters recognize yeah. real fighters, and they know yeah. what we we yeah. know what we've all have to go through to get True. there. So the people who can't recognize us, that's their own choice. And I just feel South Africa's got great fighters, and and we need to get behind. And them, and, guys. And, and, and and that's what you I know? want to do, Peter. You said, Kevin, you want to be recognized as like a legend of the sport, most definitely. And you know why I want to be recognized as that, Peter? Because I might not. Listen, you entitled to your own opinion. Uh, he's entitled to his own opinion. That guy. Maybe might not be the most skilled, the biggest one-punch knockout artist like a Mark Tyson, but I've overcome adversity in my career that many wouldn't have overcome. And all I want to be remembered in the sport of boxing when I retire globally, yes, mm. but as a South African, as a person who defeated the odds, I defied the odds and made it possible that there is hope for a kid with no amateur fights, That's there all. is hope for a boy with a dream there if you have the tenacity, the ability to work hard, the ability to listen, and belief in yourself. That's all I want to do. When I leave the sport of boxing, yeah. if I can, if there's one child who says that, sees that in me, mm. I've been, I've been successful. If there's one person whose life I've changed, mm. one person, if yep. you've changed many people's lives, if there's one, I feel, if you've changed one person's life in your life, you've lived on this earth yep. because you've made a difference in that person's life, and he's going to go on and make a difference in somebody else's life. And truly speaking, that when I leave the sport of boxing, ignoring the memor the memorabilia, the accolades, all that mm. stuff. I just want to know that I've changed people's views on the sport, views on me, and hope. Given hope to people who, so it's, yeah. from all walks of life, you can come from Dantani, you can come from Kailicha, you can come from yes. Santon CBD, yep. you can come from Four Ways, you can come from Highlands North where I was brought up. You can have a mom, you might not have a dad, you can have no parents. It doesn't matter. Everybody's like, got a story. And, I, and it yeah. bothers me if people always say, my story, I come from the hood. I, Listen, man, no one cares. Nobody it's cares. what you make of your life. And you know, that's the important you thing you said. Because, and this is giving hope to a lot of youngsters out there. Because I think a lot of people with depression and how the world's going have lost belief and self-hope or whatever. And, you know, this is what Kevin's just said, which I believe is a message that needs to be passed on. No matter where you are in this world, and in, in, in South Africa... And, I'm saying out of Africa, our continent that we are in, you know, and this is the, the, the thing I love about most is installing that, taking out the negativity in your life, stop living in the past, start seeing your future, start having that vision and believe in it and, and move towards it. Because in life, this is the greatest lesson I've learned from the greatest people that no matter what your road is, people will draw towards you, but because of they're not hating you, they just want what you what you have been. So you are inspiring them in, in some way. It's their time to take a look at them in self and say to themselves, who am I and why? You know, if you find those two questions, who am I and why, 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 what is my gift? What is my talent? You know, because you don't want people thinking, okay, I can box now. It doesn't mean it's your talent. You know what I mean? You've been given a gift and you need to look and reach out in your inner self and ask yourself, what do you have? And never let any negative, never let people and, 
and this is what I, I like what Kevin does. You know, Kevin attaches himself to people that are positive, that work on your beat. And I've always told Kevin, just be aware about your strategy. Everyone wants success and want to be a leech to their success, but they also want to pull you down where they are. So it's very important that you learn that first lesson Like Nobody wants to see somebody else thrive. Like Kieran said, nobody wants to see, everyone wants to see you do well, but they don't want to see you do better than them. That's the truth. That's 100%. And it's sad because they just haven't found their true belief. Because, and this is what I want to stress, find yourself and help people like Kevin can help you see there is an opportunity, there is a chance, and you can do it. So it depends how you look at the picture. You know, if you look at two pictures of people and they look at a picture, trust me, they'll see two different things in the same picture. And, and what I meant was, I didn't mean to come across as like, no one cares about your hardships. Mm. I don't mean that. What I mean is, let's say you meet a big businessman and he says, and you say to him, it's that guy that hard as a key day. You know what that businessman says? He says, shame. It's, okay, he moves on with his life. Yep. It's up to that guy to go make it happen. Yep. And use your hardships for you that one day when you make it, tell mm. your story and inspire someone. There we go. But don't have people feeling sorry for you. That's mm. all I wanted to say was, no matter where you're from, no matter what walk of life, go out there, make a difference, and your story, your journey will be told one day. And if it's a good one, people mm. will tell it for the for a very long time. 100%. And that's what I said. I just want to yeah. leave the sport of boxing one day knowing that I've inspired someone. There we go. It can, be one, have, it, can, it can be one person, Peter. It's have. like, it can be honestly one person. You've I've done feel, that already. I've fulfilled myself. It's like being a paramedic, right? Mm. If you can save one person's life legitimately, that person collapses, you initiate CPR, mm. you begin, you activate the, the level of care, the algorithm, and you save that person's life. Mm. To that family, you're a hero. You've, you've, you've changed, you've saved one person, but you've changed the family's life forever. And that's another thing, because I want to add on, in spite of your victories and your success, your humility inspires me because I know Kevin does paramedics. I haven't got the nerve for it. And although I see blood and I'm, and, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I always say to you, and I'm, hey, come with me to this call. That unit's bad. It's bad. You should, hey, leave dude, me out of here. I'm not coming with no, you. I, no, I don't mind. I can work in guys' eyes, cut eyes. I don't care how bad the cut is. I don't get whingy or whatever. Kevin says to me, one, come on this call. And I happen to be in the car and I'm like, Kev, geez, okay, it well, is his job and he's going to save somebody's life. So I'm just going to stand on the side. I and got I you see the stream of blood running down the road like a, yes. And I was like, nauseous. And I'm like, how does he do it, man? How do you do that you stuff? You know what it is, Peter? I'm not going to hop on about it. Can I tell you what it is? Yours. It's a calling, mm. but I get... I get fulfillment out of it because in this whole time, you're living a life as a professional sportsman, right? So a lot of the time, whilst you're having a good run, you... People are thriving for you and you're actually not living you. You're living that yeah. life. And that's yeah. what I mean. Like I never portray a bullshit image. Mm. I have no scum jumping in the paramedic car and going to save a life. Crazy. And a lot of the time you're up and seeing it, people be like, Kevin Arena, what are you doing here? And be like, hi. And I'll greet them normally. Yeah. And you know what it's about, Peter? I get, I put life in perspective and it fulfills me. And I know that, that, some that, people won't understand that, 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 that's why, a beautiful why. thing. Because, it's different because I'm fulfilling myself. And yep. If you're not fulfilling that thing, that soul, yep. and that you're not fulfilling yourself, what are you actually doing? And yeah. that's why I do it. It's something I always wanted to do. A lot of people I, don't I, know that. I, I never forget. I like, wish I'd studied. I wish I did the degree. I truly do wish yeah, it. Yeah. When I was 19, I came to the gym and I was like hustling to make money. I truly wish I'd met Wayne from Emerging Med back then. So I would have done we, the degree. We've got to have him on the show. Yeah. And that's one of my things. I want to have you and Wayne. This, this so I would have great, done the degree and, and had the biggest level, quali yeah. highest level qualification. But unfortunately, I had to settle for a short course, but it's okay. It allowed me to fulfill my dream, to practice on the road independently yep. and to just get the thrill of it. So besides the thrill, the adrenaline rush, because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm an athlete, I'm mm. a boxer, it's adrenaline. Trolley. But it's a nice environment. The people I surround yeah, myself with helpful. respect me for, for me Listen, as Kevin. You, they don't, they you, don't care. You're saving they say, hey, champ, man. they call me champ. But actually, at the end of the day, they treat me like, like this. And you know what? I, that's what I like about that, Peter. Mm. It's like, I, you know, the circle of friends you're with, the people you hang around real. with. Yes. And, real. and that's honestly like the, way, the direction all, my life's gone. Means, and I honestly have real people around yeah. me. So and, and it, it fulfills me. Yeah, and just, I, I, I want to just like jump in on this one where Kevin and I were once coming from a boxing event. It was in the bad part of town. <laughs> and Boysons. And Boysons. And we were coming through late, kind of late at night. And uh, 
Kevin had to get the call there then. No, we got flagged down. I was oh, like, we got flagged. I, said, I said, Peter, I'm in my but army. In the darkest, in the darkest alley. Dangerous alley. And we got flagged. These guys me. got assaulted. They got beaten up badly. There's like four of them. Almost to death. But not badly. With crowbars and... Badly. Like proper, we call them in, in, in medical terms, P1. Proper critical patients. And we got called and I still remember, I didn't have my... I think I had my gun. Yeah, you got my gun. Yeah, I, said, Pete, I said, Pete, I have to stop because I've been flagged down here. Yeah? We're yeah. in a shitty area. Just check my back for me. I'm going to start operating. I jump out the Dude, car. That, I can check out critical guys. That was a movie. One on one, bro. And, and that's when you, you see the, the chain of events. I yeah. escalated the call. I controlled yep. the dispatch. I phoned dispatch. It's critical patient. Send me ALS. Send me more vehicles. Send me ambulance. And the vehicle started arriving. But I was able to initiate treatment for a man on the side of the road, fucked up, who doesn't know who Kevin Arena is. He doesn't care. I want to help him. I've never seen a guy bleed out in my life. And then the worst part of it all, some of the guys eventually got to us, the yeah. backup emerging med guys, and this guy's blood was pumping out of his dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm proper. like, what a, he, had and, a threat, and, he had a threatened limb, so yeah, I wouldn't call it. And then you were still trying to find a vein. Yeah, I, and, that, and, I was and you were telling me a whole thing. I'm like, oh, geez, I, I can't yeah, watch and this. And that's says when a guy's losing blood profusely mm. and his blood pressure, his veins, he's, he's losing blood. So his cardiac output's limited. It's, yeah. it's you know, barely anything. Finding a vein is hard. Since and there's so. me in the dark trying to find a vein. I'm saying, Pete, please hold this for me. And I'm just waiting for the senior practitioners to rise so they could RO the guy or yeah. get up a line. But it's how you initiate the treatments. And that's what I get a thrill out of is like, that guy was lying on his back, yeah. bleeding, critical, borderline. And for me, it's, he an, was unforge it's an unforgettable moment. He was man. conscious, but incomprehensible signs. Yeah. He was proper, proper brain, brain trauma. Brain trauma. And, um, he was hit with uh, uh, metal uh, uh, crowbars, crowbar, man. Yeah. But like I could initiate the treatment. Yeah. And I might not have saved him or done the, the things that a surgeon's going to do. But I initiated treatment and I got fulfillment out of that. Well, when he, did, he was okay until he left. Yeah, when yeah, backup came, we handed it over. The rest of the people came. Oh, we, two of them, yeah, right? two, three. Two guys, I think three guys. Three guys. And then we could get on with it. And we'll and I'll never know how those guys did. I'll never go to the Joe McGinn where they went and say, how did these guys do? But if I got fulfillment. I could leave that scene and say, you know what? Carries initiated on, treatment. Uh, there's the chain of events, mm. phoning, help, backup. We got him to a facility, and that's where I got fulfillment out of it. That's but, why I enjoyed you, no remuneration yeah, out of it, Peter. You know that's that. incredible. No remuneration. And, and the pay is not like it's not like you guys are making any like like, I mean, like it's there for the money. It's not for the money. My missus is a is a qualified yeah, paramedic, that's easy, incredible. emergency care practitioner, and uh, so that's a BTEC, which I think it's a BEMC now. It's a bachelor's degree. And if I can tell you what a person who comes out of studying four years goes to earn as a paramedic. Your sure. Herbalife downline distributors are earning more than that. It's crazy. And this is the degree you're giving it's back. Crazy. Doctors, paramedics, it's all in the same thing. You, you, yeah. yeah, you're not it's, a doctor, yeah. but there's a chain. There's a, there's, a, there's a value for everyone. You're bringing the package mm. to the doctor to work on. It's just crazy how the salaries they're earning, and some earn a little bit better than others, but some earn really bad. It's just the I feel they can so be respected wrong, more. So yeah. I respect a lot of paramedics. I, yeah. I truly do because I know what they go through, and a lot of them can't deal with it, Peter. A lot of them, sure. young girls, young guys, they do clutch out. Yeah. They really do. And you've got to respect them for that. It's mm. understandable. They need to seek counseling and guidance because it's they traumatic. Can't, it's they traumatic. Can't. Another scenario that happened, now, and I'm just, I know we're going into a bit of a, a, a bit of a darker side where, where what happened to you you lost a great friend a, a helicopter pilot two of them i think eh? Was yeah well no so and the helicopter mark, came out of the sky so i, I was um i knew mark well well because mm. you were you another thing is kevin's been flying helicopter congratulations you qualified yeah. as a it's just another top pilot it's just a small and that blows my mind again listen beat i'm not a top pilot it's just no i'm cheap. saying i'm saying when what, I, what, what I you've say achieved is, uh, yeah it's a goal there's another it's thing massive, that says bro. goal setting piece but back to the neck accident very sad freak mm. accident catastrophic failure and made their souls rest in peace but those five people on that helicopter mark Stocks, the which surgeon. Mark the surgeon, Sinjin, the paramedic, and my, my very good friend Jan was going to be on that flight too. My good friend. You've they met flipped Jan. the coin, right? I, I think they were just deciding who was going. Uh, but I'm just yeah. saying it could have happened to anybody in the Crazy. industry. But it, it happened to happen to those guys. You've mm. got to respect those people. You know, yes, yeah, if it's yeah. early, because paramedics die in car crashes. It's just the fact of respecting the people and respecting the people of the trade from the level of a, from a sister, from an ambulance driver, mm. basic ambulance assistance, 
to an AEA, to a CCA, the whole chain, all the way to a top trauma surgeon. There's there's a place for everybody in the in the in the yeah. in the spidergram or in the hierarchy, mm. and they all deserve respect in their own right. So and that's true. all I want to portray. Yeah. And all I want to put out there for people: respect paramedics, mm. respect doctors, respect the healthcare workers because they truly see it. respect policemen, yeah. respect security guards, oh, yeah. all the guys on the front line see what a lot of individuals of the public don't see yeah and they they have to deal with it so big respect to them and that's why i do it peter but i respect them another, another big thing that i was getting going towards as well like just to let people know that kevin took on another level of going into the paramedic field which has ended up being a pilot flying people for you know yeah. you know I mean, which which i've seen you've taken me to some scenes where Helicopters yeah, yeah. are landing between power lines and it's like, it's insane. Yeah, it's it's, it's like know, so dangerous. It's about, I'm being, I'm goal driven. Yep. I, my, my personality can never be risked. Yeah. Risk, like, if that's the word, it's yeah. like, I can never be like, just short. Yeah, just go I'm goal driven. driven. You yeah. know what? I'm goal driven and it was a goal to become a pilot. Which is great. And now, I don't even think I've told you, I'm started with my commercial, so you get PPL, private pilot license, yep. which I have, so I can fly myself, I can fly my friends. I won't get remunerated for it. I can't work in a paying job. Right. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not becoming a commercial pilot to get paid mm. to be a pilot. When I mean that, what I mean by that is I'm doing it as an achievement for me. It's on my CV. Right. It's, um, I'm not looking to become and, a commercial pilot to be like, okay, I'm here, can I end my CV? I want a job. And Kev, you came out of the sky with a helicopter. Well, I was doing... But, but, but what, I'm, what I'm getting at, man, yeah, because yeah. you can't back in. It wasn't like you quit there. No. You went back. You went back yes, in, and, and I was like, we're, we're and doing, that was dangerous. So. Yeah, for sure. We're doing a training exercise. Mm. The exercise went wrong, and we had dynamic rollover, which right. doesn't happen to a lot of people, but it can happen. But it's still traumatic. I was very nervous the next time I got back yep. into helicopter. But you broke that fear. Yeah, I did. Uh, but I went to fly on the Monday, and I was cut nervous because I realized how fast things can go wrong. Yeah. Okay, so it's like a respect for things. But you, like, you were doing that to go to the next level. Yes, and trying to do a con trying to do a conversion yeah. onto a bigger machine to be just to to enhance myself in a, in a, in a, in an aspect of like becoming better, ticking off the box and achieving within. Yeah. You know, and, and unfo done for unfortunately, you, yeah. that little accident happened and but it doesn't it doesn't define me or make me i knew the, the instructor i was flying with I, I think if i'm not mistaken he's had two accidents instructing and he still gets up and flies all the time crazy he's he's got over three thousand that's hours. passion yes that's so love, you gotta respect you that do. and it's hard yeah i'll tell you right now it was a challenge mentally studying wise the practical aspect not easy and but those studies are, are intense no, it's hectic Pete. i respect pilots because yeah. I, I thought it would be a little bit easier no, it's not because it because I love droning. I got my own drone, and, yeah. and now a uh, year in Canada, you have to almost go for the pilot license. And I, I said, "Dude, I'm going to throw, my, I'm gonna throw my drone it's away." It's crazy, and 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 so I did the private pilot license, which is eight subjects. Mm. I think it's eight subjects on the PPL syllabus. I got that. I passed that, and now I'm doing my commercial pass. I've done two exams. I got another, I think, six or seven to go. And it's not about um, becoming a commercial pilot to hand in my CV and please give me a job. It's just to, to for fulfill it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I can say I've well, achieved, you, you, become a commercial pilot yeah. and hopefully with businesses that I'm starting and, and things for the future, they'll all amalgamate together and there's a reason and a purpose. Definitely. And, and that's just how I want to live my life yeah. and, and respect to all people who have helped me enjoy the journey from boxing to the people who have taught me how to fly helicopters, the, the role models I've got on the road, my friends Wayne, Bully, Craig, my Mrs. Geraldine, you know, there's a lot it's of crazy. people, Junior, that have played a very big role in my mm. life and, and, and not as in becoming the world champion, social development, but emotional development. That's what I love about you because your humility in the ring, I mean, you got to believe you're the shit. So yeah. some people get offended by some people feeling like they're the shit. And that's what you have to do. It's a, goal, it's it's, just, it's a given it's a, thing. It's a switch, Pete. People think maybe it's, this area, you, yeah. you know what? Maybe this is great at what he does. And greatness stands on a, on a platform. It doesn't stand below. It's, it's, it's a switch, Pete. Yeah. You know that switch. I said, and I think you, when I put on my gloves and I spar, it's switched on. Listen, you it's know your, me. It's your you life. see me, I can look at you in the gym when you're on the back and you, and you start laughing because I'll make a joke or I'll, I'll yeah. pull a funny face yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? When I say, when I start looking at you and I, and I look at you in the eyes, I, Pete, I said, boy, Pete, these boys are fucked. I'm saying it because I'm sucking myself yeah. and I'm believing in myself and I got the switch. I got the switch. Yeah, exactly. and I know what I have to do. There's a time for fun, but I'll let my rugby coach back in school would say, boots on, switch on. 
gloves on, switch on. 100%. And it's the same concept. Great, great and there's lots of lessons I've learned. So in, in things I've, I've learned in life is, yes, you've played a major role in my boxing career. You've helped me get to this point and forever be respected for that because we've done it together. You, have to be, you, you deserve that. And respect. I enjoy this journey And, 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 too, and not too. to say you don't get the respect because the real people know, but you don't. People need to realize that. One, it, okay? Two, the paramedic industry, the people that have played an important role, thank you to them. Mm. All my sponsors, Yep. They know who they are. Wow. Thank you to them. They've got yeah. they've backed me. They've backed me some from the past, this, some this, from now, and some yeah. hopefully for the future. All the helicopter pilots, NAC Aeronautic Solutions, who's allowed me to fly on their machines and have coached me and trained me to be better. Thank you. Because you haven't made me a world champion, but you've fulfilled me emotionally. You've stimulated me and you've helped me develop it to become a better person. 100%. And the journey is still going. And that's where we are, Pete. And, and that's where we are right now. Yep. We got to fuck up Rod Murray. There we go. But there's life after and, him because and, we're going to continue our journey. And, and thanks for everything, yep. Pete. I just like, I love mean, you, my It's champ. been honestly great yeah, to be honestly. with you. And I felt like this is the easiest conversation I've had because there's a lot that I've been able to spill out onto the table that you can't really have in a conversation uh, with a group of people. And you can't. And when you go to interview a television network or whatever, they they prompt you, they ask you a question, you must answer, 100%. and you don't have time to. And this fill. this this is what I love because on this show, I, I wanted people to know Kevin Arena. Yeah. I want I want them to know the champ, but also on on our journey together, I want people to understand and watch us on the show coming up. Um, it's going to be televised on Mnet. My champions in hard training. We are, we are, we, we are hard bleeding, we are bleeding we, we, for this. We always train hard, Pete. And I just want to say thank you for everything. Always. This is a, a fight that means a lot to both of us. And I know that. And that's yep. why I've always upped my game. But I know what I have to do because besides not letting myself down, I got you, I got you to, not impress, I got you to, fulfill your like what you've longed for a very long time putting yeah, your time and you, effort yeah. into me and uh, i just want to say thank you to all the south african supporters you get behind me i truly appreciate it. i know i'm not as vocal in thanking people a lot of people and stuff but those who know me and know who i am and know what i'm about and i hope this show has helped you understand me a bit better and subscribe to Peach channel because honestly this is one of the easiest conversations i've had with a person and there we go we out we are out thank you escom <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> you know, Peter, I just want to say thanks for having me on the show. I really look forward to coming on to the show. But also, I truly want to say thanks to all my supporters, to everybody who gets behind me. I, I honestly appreciate it. I know I don't vocalize it enough, but I appreciate every single one of you, those that have played an important role in my life. Thank you, Pete. And you, stay tuned. You know, we're living the journey. This is what life's about. And I can honestly say, Thank you for this chat. It was honestly so easy to talk to. I, th I was thinking to myself, driving here, what am I? I'm, I talk to Pete all the time. How are we going to be in conversation? Yeah. Pete, well done to you. Thank you. And I thought it was just about coming naturally, mm. talking how we feel. So subscribe to Pete's channel. Thank you. I'm subscribed and I'm going to get, get this post. I'm going to tweet this out and post it as much as I can because I honestly, I've been able to speak. I haven't been able to speak in the past because like I said, a lot of stuff is scripted and, and you've got to answer questions. Yeah, we're talking freely and there's a lot of stuff people don't know about me. So thanks for having me, Pete. And honestly, pleasure, my brother. It's been a Lots pleasure being on your show. Thank, Thank you, you my champ. Thank you. And there's a lot more to come from my champ. Watch us. <laughs> Thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up and uh, thank you for watching and spending time with my, my bro. Luck. Thank you. <laughs>